Hi, welcome to the third analytical geometry tutorial. Today's tutorial is titled Basic Shapes in Analytical Geometry. We are going to be looking at some basic shapes in analytical geometry and a few rules to apply when going through calculations using basic shapes. In terms of what you need to know, you need to be familiar with your grade 10 work on analytical geometry. You also need to have gone through the first two tutorials on analytical geometry. We will begin our discussion by looking at the median of a triangle. The median of a triangle is a line drawn from any angle of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. Let us take this triangle for example, triangle ABC. A median would be a line drawn from A to X where X is the midpoint of BC or from C to Z where Z is the midpoint of AB or from B to Y where Y is the midpoint of AC. Now let us take a look at the perpendicular bisector. First, let's break that term down. Perpendicular means that one line is at a 90 degree angle to another line. That means that their gradients are the negative inverses of each other. Bisector. Bisector means that it cuts it in two bisector cuts in two or rather cuts in half. That means that the perpendicular bisector of a line segment would be the line that passes through the midpoint of another line and its gradient is the negative inverse of the original line. Let us look at an example to illustrate. If I have the line AB, I then sketch the line CD, which is going to be the perpendicular bisector of AB. That means that the gradient of CD is going to be the negative inverse of the gradient of AB. So, if the gradient of AB was equals to 2 over 3, the gradient of CD would equal negative 3 over 2. Also, at the point where the two lines intersect, at that point, the coordinates of that point are the midpoint of AB because CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Taking that definition, and moving it into triangles. If any median happens to be the perpendicular bisector, it means that that line is the height of the triangle. Let us look at an example to illustrate. We'll use the triangle PQR. If I sketch a median PS and PS is 90 degrees is at a 90 degree angle to QR or rather perpendicular to QR and S is the midpoint of QR that means that PS is the perpendicular height of the triangle. We are now going to look at the different types of triangles. The first triangle I'm going to look at is one that is called the scalene triangle. A scalene triangle is a triangle whereby none of the sides or angles are equal to each other. The next triangle we're going to be looking at is known as an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle two sides are equal to each other 
as well as their two base angles. The next triangle is known as an equilateral triangle and as the name says it, all of these sides are equal. Due to the fact that all of these sides are equal, all of the angles are equal as well. Because of this relationship, the medians of an equilateral triangle are all equal to each other. The last triangle we will be looking at is the right angle triangle. By far the most common triangle you would have encountered in your high school career. There are two important deductions that can be made about the right angle triangle. Due to its main property that one angle is equal to 90 degrees or rather two sides are perpendicular to each other. The first deduction is that either of those two sides that are perpendicular to each other can act as both the base as well as the height of the triangle. The second deduction that can be made is one that was studied by Pythagoras which states that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the two other sides squared added to each other. Remember that in any right angle triangle the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. The next shape I want to look at is known as the parallelogram. The parallelogram is a shape that looks like this. There are two important properties of a parallelogram. The first is that the opposite sides are equal and parallel. Also the diagonals bisect each other. Let us look at what I mean. We'll look at the example of parallelogram ABCD. Property 1 which states that the opposite sides are parallel and equal will mean that AB is parallel and equal to DC. That means that the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of DC. At the same time BC is parallel and equal to AD. The second property is that the diagonals bisect each other. If I draw in diagonal AC and diagonal BD, at point E where they intersect, they are going to be bisecting each other or cutting each other in half. That means that E is the midpoint of AC as well as the midpoint of BD. I now want you to copy the following table into your workbooks in the spaces provided. Thereafter do the exercise, press pause on your DVD player and when you return we'll go through it together. The first one I said was determine the equation of AP if AP is a median. Now if AP is a median of this triangle it means that P is the midpoint of BC. That means that the coordinates of P are going to be given by x2 plus x1 which is 7 plus 5 which is 12 over 2 and 3 plus 5 which is 8 over 2 which means that the coordinates of P are 6 and 4. Now that we have that down we can very easily get the equation of AP start by saying that the gradient of AP is equal to y2 minus y1 or the other way around to give us negative 1 y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is equal to negative 5 over negative 10 which is equal to positive 1 over 2. That means that my equation for AP reads y is equal to 1 over 2x plus c. Substitute any point that I have, I'm going to substitute that point in 
That means that negative 1 is equal to a half times negative 4, which is negative 2, plus c. c is equal to negative 1 plus 2, which is equal to positive 1. That means that our equation reads y is equal to a half x plus 1. Let's just write that somewhere in there. A half x plus 1. Now the reason I had to start by getting the coordinates of P was that I didn't have any more information. In order to get the straight line, remember I need either two coordinates or I need a gradient and one set of coordinates. In this case, I had neither. Neither. Let's just put in the coordinates of P. Um, that was 7 plus, that was 6 and that was 4. Right, that's the coordinates of P. So I first had to get the coordinates of P and then I used that to get first the gradient of AP and then the equation of AP. Number two, the length of AP. That we're going to use the distance formula. AP is going to equal square root of y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared plus because that was negative and negative is equal to square root of 4 plus 1 is 5 squared is 25 6 plus 4 is 10 squared is 100 that means that AP is equal to square root of 125 now 125 is the same as 25 times 5 square root of 25 is equal to 5 square root of 5 we can't find that means that AP in simplest third form is equal to 5 root 5. The next thing I asked you was, is AP a height? Now if AP is a height, it means that the gradient of AP would be the perpendicular gradient or the negative opposite gradient of BC. The gradient of BC is equal to y2 minus y1, 3 minus 5 is negative 2, over x2 minus x1, 7 minus 5 is 2, which is equal to negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And the gradient of AP we know is equal to positive a half. Problem these two are not the opposite gradients of each other because negative 1 multiplied by 1 over 2 is going to give me negative 1 over 2 which is not equal to negative 1 if these two were perpendicular the, multi the product of the two gradients would have to be negative 1 in this case it's not that means that AP is not a height. The second one I gave you to do looked something like this with points A, B and C. Coordinates of B and C are given. I then said that AB is equal to AC or rather if AB is equal to AC find the equation of a d quite an easy one to do to get the equation of a d I need either a gradient in one set of coordinates or two sets of coordinates I can't find the coordinates of d not yet at least but I can find the coordinates of a and the way I'm going to do that is by saying AB is equal to AC. A, I'm just going to give it the coordinates X, Y for now. That means that AB will equal Y2 minus Y1, which is just going to be Y plus 1 squared plus X2 minus X1, which is X minus 3 squared, that's AB, is equal to y plus 1 squared 
plus x plus 1 squared. All I've done there is said that AB squared is equal to AC squared. y plus 1 squared on both sides are going to cancel each other out. That means that x minus 3 squared is equal to x plus 1 squared. That means that x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to x squared minus plus sorry plus 2x plus 1. x squareds on both sides cancel. Minus 6x minus 2x is minus 8x is equal to 1 minus 9 which is minus 8. That means that x is equal to negative 8 divided by negative 8 which is positive 1. x is equal to positive 1. Now the question is what is the y value? Remember I said that AD is a height. So if AD is a height, wouldn't the gradient of CB be perpendicular to the or the negative opposite of the gradient of AD? The gradient M of CB is equal to Y2 minus Y1 which is going to give me negative 1 mul negative 1 minus minus 1 or negative 1 plus 1 which is 0 over 3 minus minus 1 or 3 plus 1 which is 4 so my gradient is 0 that means that my opposite gradient is undefined That doesn't mean we can't get the equation of AD. All it means is that AD is a perpendicular line. Perpendicular to the x-axis or rather parallel to the y-axis. That means that I drew my graph a bit wrong. It should rather look like that. And it's perpendicular there because I found that my gradient is undefined of AD. That means that the equation of D, now look at that. We know that the x value at D is 1. That means that the equation of D, AD, is the equation x is equal to 1. That's all that the equation of AD is. Now, the second thing I asked you, is AD a median as well? In order for AD to be a median, D would have to be the midpoint of BC. Is it? The midpoint of BC is going to be given by 3 plus negative 1, which is 2, divided by 1, which is equal to 2 divided by, sorry, 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. So it seems as though the X value is definitely going to make it a median. In terms of the y values, we're going to get a y value of negative 1 plus negative 1, which is 0, divided by 2 is 0. That means that the midpoint, oh sorry, that's negative 1 plus negative 1. That means that that's going to be negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Now we don't have the y coordinate of d and we haven't been able to calculate it. But based on the x value, d is the median as well as the height. And that brings us to the end of the third tutorial on analytical geometry. It was an easy one. I hope you had fun. Please go through the exercise that I left for you in the workbook before progressing on with the next tutorial titled cumulative basics.